Today, I'm going to share with you, don't be a hover drone over the narcissist. Hi, I'm Nanette. Welcome back to Narcissism Exposed. So when you first detach from the narcissist, whether, whether they discarded you or you discarded them, them does not matter. That's, that's, the focus is now going no contact. And why do we go no contact? Well, that's so that you can now begin your journey of self-healing and self-love and to grow spiritually and to stay in your safety zone and self-preservation. So you're now taking the focus off of that horror go round relationship you were in with the narcissist and now you're putting all of your energy, all of your focus on you and taking care of your heart and mending those wounds and becoming a stronger woman or man on your path and journey with God's help being strong in the Lord. So I want to clarify first the difference between a Hoover and a hover drone. We all know the word Hoover uh, is associated with the narcissist when they're low on supply or the new supply doesn't work out and they come back and they look who's in the toolbox, right? It, they see who's still in my toolbox that I could use. And if you're still in that toolbox, they will come over and hoover over you like hoover, like, like a vacuum cleaner. They'll suck you into their bag of tricks again and their bag of evil. And if you're not sharp, you may get sucked into that again. So the difference of a hover drone is um, a drone is like an eye in the sky type of thing. It's a machinery. It's got some, um, it's got propellers and uh, it hovers, it hovers over an area, a, a target, and it will uh, capture and monitor activity, right? That's what it does. So it's called kind of an eye in the sky. So what do I mean about do not become a hover drone? Well, like a lot of people say to me, Nanette, you know, uh, I definitely believe in no contact and that's what I've been doing, uh, but I am watching. I am watching their social media and um, what they'll do, <laughs> even though they go no contact, they'll, they'll watch and monitor their ex-narcissist and in the back of their mind, they're thinking, you know what, I'm going to give him or her two months probation, no contact at all but I'm going to be watching them. I'm going to be checking their social media. I'm going to see what's going on. I'm going to see if they're, they're rehabilitating. I'm going to see, I'm going to send my friends over to their social media and let them help me check them out. Well, that's not really no contact, is it? You are still maintaining eye contact with the narcissist and you're not releasing him or her, you're not letting it go and focusing completely on yourself, but you're negotiating with yourself that you are not going no contact, you're just gonna keep an eye out. You're gonna hover drone them. You're gonna watch them from afar. A second thing that um, you might consider doing and still believe you're going no contact is do drive-bys to where they live. See if there's a, a another car in the driveway that you don't recognize or go by their workplace or their family and friends. And again, you're being a hover drone. You're watching, you're the eye in the sky and you're trying to get keep an eye out on the narcissist. That is uh, that is no con that is not no contact. That's a form of still staying attached and connected to the narcissist. And maybe you're, you're still friends with some of the narcissist's friends or the family, and you're, you're, you're going, contacting them and um, maybe texting them and watching their social media, and you're just kind of telling yourself, well, I'm just seeing how they're doing. But inside you're really hoping you'll get a little glimpse as to where the nars your ex narc is at in life after detaching from you and again 
this is not what's meant by no contact. No contact means no form of connection whatsoever. You've allowed yourself to become a hover drone and you're still watching out over the narcissist to see where they're at at this time. So again, no contact means blocking social media, blocking them on your, your phone, uh, shutting out all, all forms of connection with them, asking your friends and your family, your kids to block the narcissist so that they're not creeping up into their social media and, and hovering you. And there's a few reasons why you've decided to become a hover drone. The first reason is that in your mind, you're still hopeful and you're giving them what is called in your mind, your, a, a probation period. You want to see if there are going to be any changes in the narcissist because you still want that relationship in the back of your mind. Your, your heart is still bleeding. The wound is still open. So you, you've decided without talking, this is not, these were not terms that you decided with your narcissist, but that you are thinking, well, let's see what the probationary period looks like. And that period of time could be two weeks, two months, a year, it, whatever it is, you're, you've decided that within that time, while I'm watching you becoming a hover drone, um, I'm going to put you on probation. The second reason you've become a hover drone is that you want to see if they're sad and, and hurting as much as you are since the breakup. You want to see if they're bleeding on their Facebook page, if they're saying just how much you, they miss you and so on. Don't do that. No, no. I understand you want to see if there's some type of mutual um if they really loved you, if they really are missing you, and so you're watching over their social media to see that. A third reason that you've become a hover drone is that you think you can still help the narcissist. You know, you're thinking, I, I put so much time into him or her. I, I put so many years into him or her. You know what? Maybe, maybe it was premature that we broke up. I, I could still help them. Let me watch and see what's going on with them and see if they give me some clues as to whether I can really help them. And a fourth reason why you've become a hover drone is that you want to see if they're happy with the new supply. You want to check it out and, and see, hmm, they could never find anyone as amazing as you and me. So let me see how they're doing with their new supply. And you know what you're going to find on their social media platforms? You're going to find fake happiness. That's right. You know they're just going to put on a show. They've got the mask going and they're going to the, produce pictures of fake happiness. Don't do that to yourself. No, no. And then you want to go back on your social media and post pictures with, you know, happiness and look and look at all the people I'm friends with now and see, I've met somebody new too. You're trying to match their happiness, but no, don't do that. You need to just completely just get, get them out of your view and have just yourself as your focal point. The fifth reason you might become a hover drone is that you're watching out to see if they're bad mouthing you, if they're doing this smear campaign and gosh darn, you're going to protect your good reputation. And if you even find any of that, you're, you're going to let them have it. You're going to tell them how like it is. You're going to tell them, you know what they are, but, no, that's again, that's you investing your heart, your thoughts, and your time into a lost cause right now. You are not what the narcissist, count your blessings, praise the Lord, because now you are free from that bondage, that control, that trickery, that evil that wanted to destroy you. You must keep those things. Remind yourself why you are not in that relationship anymore. 
cut all the strings. No more hover drones, no more watching. And I'm gonna see what, you, what you're doing, what's going on. See if there's, you know, what, what it's like in your probation period. And let me see if maybe you're bad mouthing me. No, we don't want to do that. All that's doing is keeping your wound oozing and pussing and bleeding. That's all that's doing. You want to heal from the trauma bond, from all the, the evil that the narcissist did to you, to the confusion and chaos that, that may still be in your mind. All you're doing is continuing, having that continue to go on. And we want to sever all of these things. You're stuck in an emotional bondage and there's four things that you must do right now. And the first one is to remind yourself what the narcissist was in your life. And that narcissist was evil in your life. The narcissist was destruction in your life. They cheated on you, they lied. Remind yourself that the narcissist, what the narcissist was and right there you're going to want to cut off that hover drone the second thing you must do is you must believe in who you are you are a wonderful amazing good person you are an empath you are a child of god remind yourself of who you are and what you bring to the table and how your life is filled with love and passion and joy and peace and that you're on a path of truth and righteousness that you have a godly destiny in your life i want you to remind yourself of that the third thing you must do is you must love yourself more than that fake relationship you were in. You absolutely must do that. You must understand and remind yourself that that really, you are not getting true love from the narcissist. You are giving true love. You are giving purity from your heart. You were giving your all, but that's not what they were giving you back. So now you must love yourself more than you love being in a relationship that is doomed to be to lead to destruction and that's filled with evil that the narcissist is is pulling on you so remind yourself that you deserve great love and you also deserve somebody just like you you deserve somebody just as wonderful just as kind just as full of love and graciousness as you are you deserve that yeah you do the fourth thing you must do is you must immerse yourself in the Word of God and be strong in the Lord as it says in Ephesians chapter 6 and immersing yourself in God's Word is going to continue to illuminate the eyes of your understanding so you understand just the kind of trickery you were in but more than that you understand who you really are in Christ Jesus and what your true destiny is and what's available from God Almighty who cares so tremendously for you now I know you may be going you know what but Nanette I'm so afraid I, I'm so scared I, I don't know if I could take the first steps towards my healing I don't know if I could just do it all alone again you're not alone you've got God Almighty who you can rely on his strength and you have other brethren brothers and sisters in Christ to rely on you can come to this channel here you can let us know what your prayer requests are you can start developing and building a camaraderie with like-minded believers and I want to read something to you about God has not given you fear God has given you so much more to overcome your fear and it says in 2nd Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 for God has not given us a spirit of fear no but of power and of love and of a sound mind you have a sound mind the narcissist does not have a sound mind but he'll help you lose your mind if you stay with them because that that's all they are that's all they do is inflict you with what they are and that word so sound mind also communicates sound judgment self-discipline 
and self-control. That's you. That is the opposite of what the narcissist is. So you need to push them back, push them back, push them way back so that you can grow in who you, God has made you to be. And you can walk in your sound mind. You can walk in your power. You can walk in the love of God. You can walk in your self-control. You can walk in your self-discipline. That's right. And you know what? You, you can always cast your cares to God. He is always there for you 24 seven all the time. And you know what? What you've gone through, I've gone through. Others have gone through. But you know what pulls us out? God's mighty word, God's love, grace, and mercy that he gives to us. We need to reach back up to him and not walk past it and, and say, oh, I don't know what to do. God's word tells you what to do. He says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole word of God. And you have, the, you have an ultimate superpower. You have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And that's what I'm sharing with you in these videos is not only the MO of the narcissist and what they're like and what they're doing and, and how they just hover, hoover you just so they could suck you back into their bag of tricks and evil and become supply once again for them. No, you're done with that. No, you're a child of God and you deserve the very, very best. And you're going to keep healing and go on your journey of truth as you continue on with God's word. And I'm going to end with these verses in God's word. And it's in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through 9. And it says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Now, how do you humble yourself? By going to God's word, by recognizing you can't do this alone, that you need a higher power because you've been dealing with a narcissist who's engaged with a higher power and that's evil, devilish demonic influences. Now you are going to a higher power, which is God almighty. And that's the highest power there is. And you're going to go to his word. And it says under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time, he may exalt you, lift you up. Cast all your care and anxiety on him because he cares for you. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of sufferings you are. There's others that are going through this as well, that we, we live in an ever-present evil world. But even at that, God's word says that greater is he that's in you, which is God in Christ in you, than he, the devil spirits that are in the world. That's right. And you need to recognize your position in Christ and who you are and the true power that resides within you and walk in that trusting God, knowing that you can hold his hand every step of the way. And you also have this community here. Know that I'm praying for you. The community is praying for you. And we thank you for your prayers for us too. We all need those prayers. And I want you to share your heart in the comments below. Share whatever's happened to you. If you have questions, if you have Bible verses that you want to share as well, and your prayer requests, and know that you are not alone. So no more hover drones, no more keeping an eye on the narcissist. I want full eyes on you and your care for yourself and your healing and the love that you're rebuilding in your life with the help of God Almighty. So go ahead and share this video with others. And if this was helpful to you, please do hit the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, do hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I put out a video. And until next time, walk in peace and be blessed in your hearts.